Ah, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing food security in Nigeria and it's getting really heated. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at We Show Africa 1 with the hashtag We Show or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. I think we have some WhatsApp messages already. Let's quickly take that before we um, we'll talk to Inkiru. Okay, so I have mine from Angela. She says, I am at a loss. The government at every opportunity says their priority is agriculture. So my thought is that they are very big in driving agriculture. Or is, there, or is this a more you see problem? So I think she wants to say the more you see, the more you look, the less, less, you, the see. less you see. Okay, so let me take a, a comment. Uh, this is from Benson. In the world, food cannot be grown without security. Um, as long as our country's security situation continues to degrade, food prices will continue to go up. This is really scary. Then um, he also says, agri is delicate and requires established infrastructure for it to flourish, access to funds, access to roads, and he says equipment. Um, Sanzi, you have, you have some with you? Um, On your, yeah. Okay, so let's bring in um, Kiru. Security um, is still a major, major problem, you know. Um, we've talked about access to finance, which is very huge. And I keep saying to this government, stop playing lip service. We are farmers and we know we do not have any other property other than our farmland. Like you rightly said, expedite the C of O process for farmlands. You know, in fact, once you know that the farm is, is, a, is for uh, farming, you, the, the governor should just stamp it immediately Uwa, and not ask Uwa, for anything. Can I add something to expediting it? Also subsidize it. That, it is very you know what expensive. I said? It should not even charge you for it because you are solving a major problem. So we if we say there's a looming um, scarcity of food in that is, that is coming, we are so sure it's coming. You know, if you truly want to solve that problem, you should make it easy for every farmer to be able to do their business and right. produce more, you know, Ease and reduce production. the cost of farming for them. You know, so in Kero, if you were going to also propose something on security, what would that security look like for you? What would security mean to you as a farmer? The issue is security for farmers is such a delicate issue because, you know, many of us, the farms are actually in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. So that's where the issue is. They are not in the urban areas and somehow there seems to be a concentration of security in the urban areas. So even for even the security to be able to assess the place, there are not even any good rules. I know when we're having so much kidnapping in the Ekbe area. The problem is that I'm even call the cops to come. Before they even assess the road to come there, the kidnappers are taking the people, taking both behind and taking them. Mm. So the security is a national issue because it's not something that could be dealt one-on-one -on -one or in some areas. But they have to be infrastructure. Even if it's having farming settlements, having in each area that's farming settlement, having a special police or having police to protect that area and having us have the numbers, or even having patrol around the area, because you know sometimes the feeling of knowing that they have patrol is what is going to keep up the criminals. But security, farmers should be able to safely assess their farm. I know a couple of years, but I think last even up to last two years, um, a lot of farmers lost products because they couldn't assess their farm because they were being kidnapped in the farms in Quebec. So yes, yeah, security is a major issue because I have to be alive to be able to plant food to be able to give you. Mm -hmm. But government has to bring it as a total package of actually security, even for all the food. Because sometimes even when you have even harvested the food and you're coming on the road, even bandits attack you and steal trucks. Mm. So it has to be seen as a general Nigerian problem of sorting the, the security problem. So we see oh. how we see how the security affects almost uh, almost everything. Yeah. So we have this message uh, from Rola K. I hope I got the name right. Uh, it says the immediate past minister Adeshino did a lot of work in agriculture. Are we saying most gains have been lost? Mm. That's a comment. I'm not sure. Yeah. No, I think a it's a question. It's, it's actually okay. a question. Did you get the question, Ikiro? She's um. Because I think I heard her phone um, vibrating. No, I guess okay. I yeah. tell you 100% of what additional did has been lost. So I think we have even gone around at 10%. We have gone backwards. Wow. All the benefits additional brought in have been lost. Wow. 
Okay, so I mean, we thought that the infrastructure, the structures are put in place to continue. But the typical Nigerians, the people who came after, many times you have this problem that people who succeed, people who succeed, other people don't continue with their programs. Many of us entered agriculture when we saw the exciting things Additional was trying to do, and we saw a hope. That was why a lot of us, I relocated by Nigeria to farm. So it is surprising that, and people keep saying, you came back to farm. I say, yes, I came back to farm. I was so hopeful, I was so excited. But all the gains and all the hopes to have are, are, are being dissipated as I, as, I, as I stand. So everything additional did has been lost and we have even gone backwards even before when he came in. We have to, this is, this is really serious. We have to invite the Minister for a Greek. I'll be which one, what would I call the, 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 the person in charge? He's the minister now. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, ben, Benson says, what are the basic needs the government can deploy for a young farmer to cultivate the land? What? That one there. Eh? I'm sure the person says, should be listening. almost the entire north uh, food growth has been affected due to, due to security. This is a huge calamity just waiting to happen. I think it's already happening. Hmm. For us to buy four balls it's of happening. onions for 500 naira, it is really crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, in Kira, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit depressed. Please don't be. <laughs> I don't know what to say <laughs> because no, no, this is something this that we are already are seeing it that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you are not being yes. proactive enough as a government to say, you know what, cut all these laws. People that live abroad, my sister that lives in France, it is the percentage you take a loan is so ridiculous that everybody walks in and you, you get the loan immediately. So mm -hmm. I don't even know what to say anymore because it's, it's tiring, you know. You know that it is, it is something that is unavoidable. It will mm -hmm. happen with the, the, the state of security in, in the north, and it, it will happen. So what is the solution? Do you want everybody to die of hunger? That's the point. I, I, can, I, can, feel, I can feel your passion, Uwa. And you know, the funny thing is that every time we talk about diversification, just as um, our listener or our viewer said, is that the first thing the government talks about is agriculture. All the time we talk about agriculture, but really, what is it, what's been done? Now, I want to touch on technology. Because I know that there have been um, the diverse technologies in the world and places where we think that they couldn't have produced food, such as Israel, are doing well. Is, does technology have a role in the way that we produce and we farm in Nigeria? Do you think we are at par with the latest technology when it comes to farming? <laughs> Why is laughing? Because uh, I think she knows the answer. But please help us. Yes, you see, in those countries who talk about the use technology, there's something that's expensive. Labor is expensive. So they substitute with technology. Okay. But you're talking technology. How about power to power the technology? Mm. On my farm, where I use technology, I use drip irrigation to grow so I can grow all year round. I run generator eight hours a day. Wow. Every day. I've been doing this for five, five, six years since I started operations. I've had people who have set up fish farms using rust, recirculating aqua system where they maximize water, the fish grows faster, they maximize every input. They have stopped doing that because they have to have power 24 hours. Mm. So if you don't fix the power problem, technology is not going to play a major role in this our, in this, our current environment of in agriculture. Ah, so we go so back to what, infrastructure. <laughs> wow. So uh, here, I would like to hear your um, uh, projections, uh, given that you're an expert in your field in agriculture, your projections, let's say, for the next five years, how do you think things are going to turn out? Beyond Gal this year. <laughs> <laughs> Ikiru, did you hear the question? I think we, we lost her. Um, I, am, I, am, I don't know, I'm depressed. Well, like, I, thought, I thought, no, 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 no. You, know why, you know why it's depressing? You know why it's depressing? Because this is something that we clearly are seeing that is going to happen. Do you understand? It's going to happen. And we're not doing anything about it. It's almost like we're playing lip service. Now, this is not only in Kiro. Every farmer that I have met and I ask, have you been able to access these funds that they claim that is, is available Everywhere. for farmers? It's not available. Now, look at it now. We're talking about security. Mm -hmm. How can you as a farmer, you've spent so much to plant your crop. You've spent so much fertilizing those crops. You've spent so much grooming those crops to ensure that they come out right. And you're not going to go and harvest those crops. They tell you that you have to pay a fee it's before you can ridiculous. access your farm. And this is a person ridiculous. who has no claims to now, your land. Now, I'll no tell you what we did produce. when we moved into our farmland. It was, it was nothing. We built roads. We provided water for the community. 
So wow. now that the fact that the road is even accessible, it is because, you know, we made sure that we put in the work. How many people can afford that? How many people? And, and we, what we, another plan is that we want to move the youth population. When we talk about entrepreneurship, another thing is everybody going back to the farm. Yes. Everybody doing agriculture. So there's a comment on that. I think um, right. Shanzi okay. has that. So this is, um, I don't have the name of the person mm. who sent this. It says there is a need to call national operation to feed the nation. And the NYSC structure can be deployed to intervene on production for each state wow. with a will it can happen. So uh, what I'm saying is that, what I'm seeing here is another um, avenue to use taxpayers' money to fund something that we know. Mm. Why we have farmers already, why mm. don't we enable those farmers? Because mm. what White is saying and, and what our guest is saying is that there are farmers, that she relocated to Nigeria to do what? To farm. farm. So make wow. the conditions conducive. And people are willing. So if it is profitable, if they're, if they're secured, if their investment is secure, people mm -hmm. will go into and, agriculture. And let me tell you something, AK and Sanzi. There is one thing that will never, no matter how food, uh, what's it called, uh, cloth business can die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. Hair, Brazilian hair, can, I can become, uh, I can go and shave my head. Mm -hmm. Makeup can die. But food business is Top one priority. business that can never die because everybody must eat. That's so true. if you are a serious government and you say you really want to put, you know, structures in place to enable, you know, food security, then you know what to do. I think we have Inkiru back. Inkiru, thank you again. Sorry, I think the network was a bit funny. Yes, thank you very much. So, so, so I just about to add to what you were saying. Remember when, they, when, when the lockdown came in COVID, nobody was calling their tailor. Nobody was calling their jewelry. No one was calling there. Everybody was we buying and eat. stocking up on food. That's true. So that's a constant. Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, Inkiru, I don't know. Can you just give me a little bit of hope? I don't because, <laughs> Like projection. Yeah. No, I mean, give me a... <laughs> no, I, I, no, I think I I've gotten to that point. I've never hope. felt... <laughs> Inkiru, I've never felt like <laughs> this so with any show. Okay, no, so I've never felt good like thing this. I, I can say is that a lot of young people or retired professionals are going into farming. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's going to change, but it's, it's a slower process. Um, people are quite hopeful because the advantage we have is that we have a high population. We're definitely going to feed them. And with this uh, signing of the, um, the um, I think, the Free African Trade Movement, yeah. there's hope that if we don't get the prices we want here, there's opportunity to send it elsewhere, oh, which is actually yeah. what is happening in the onions. They're getting better prices in Ghana, Niger, so they're sending their onions there. So those are bad. So basically, there are lots of opportunities in the agri sector. Um, it's not been easy. It's challenging. But if you have to stay in power, I would advise you it is something you should think about. Hmm. It's true. So I, I agree with you because when it comes to exportation, I think the... I think that SMEs actually contribute less than 10% to what has been exported. So if we mm. have really young people and also, um, you know, retirees having interest, and then we even have something to export, and probably maybe we go back to yeah. cocoa or maybe go back to... You, you can see that there is another source for foreign exchange. And maybe we can just stop sleeping on this oil and everybody will rest. Like, seriously. Yeah. Um, some, someone once said that maybe everything is happening now it's paving the road for what we have to do. So forcing our hands to go to do the right thing. And the thing is, I really, really hope that the government will be able to do the right thing. We'll be able to, when you provide these phones, let people assess it. As in Korea, I said, let it not be passing through the eye of a needle. Okay, let us create, let us appraise this loan as well and create um, situations where honest people can access the loan at affordable price. Absolutely. Yeah. We need to tackle this poverty thing because if I trace this poverty thing, it's affecting everything. It's everything. It's and affecting also everything. Yeah. Food uh, waste and, and, and Benton the is helping you to do the projection. It says in the next five years <laughs> <laughs> projection, sadly we can't grow beyond our security apparatus. So yeah, we can. Um, there was someone that corrected. I think the, the the story I was trying to talk about the bread and the cake or something. Yes, Sounds well, you have that. The Spanish <laughs> the Inquisition. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll um, just quickly read that. All right. At some point around uh, 1789, when being told that her French subjects had no bread, Marie Antoinette, uh, that's the bride of France, kings Louis um, the 16th, 14th, 14th, <laughs> 14th, yeah, 16th, yeah. Okay. Supposedly sniffed um, 
Let Royals? them eat cake, mm. you know. With that yeah. Carlos remark, the queen became a hated symbol of the decadent monarchy and failed the revolution. Yeah, yeah. when they are, when they are crying, the revolution. crying like, for bread, that's the they let eat cake. I don't know why I brought a paper inside the matter. I think she talked about cassava bread or something. I can't remember yeah, what it was. Yeah, I think, yes. Yeah, so yeah, I, I mumbled bread, it together. Yes, together. Um, but um, I, thank you so much, Inkiru, for, for your time. I, I really thank appreciate it. We're hoping that we're going to keep these conversations going. I mean, it's not something that you talk one off. You know, we'll try right. as much as possible to see if we can get the minister for it. Because, you see, let us solve this problem. And let us... I, I think... I, I keep begging our leaders. Can we just get to that point where we stop to play to the gallery and just do this work? Because you have 200 million people at, in your hands to take care of. I mean, where will we go to? We don't have any other country. This is our country. And we right. must make it right. That's my point. Okay, so ladies, you know, I, I am depressed, so, but I don't know about you. <laughs> Don't be depressed, please. <laughs> Ikiru made me depressed. No, Ikiru did. I don't think Ikiru did that. I no, think, I think the facts well were staring in at, our faces. In your yeah. faces right. And then you can't just help it. So she was just reiterating what the facts are. Mm. And, and if you mm -hmm. just go out and see the number of people that are hungry, it's enough to be depressed. But we yeah. can't We can't yeah. lose hope. Yeah. We can't. We can't what lose hope. Um, well, I think she made a very uh, valid point that oftentimes we disregard it. The fact that um, the urban areas are so secured, but then the rural areas, which is where this food is coming from. And the urban areas are still secured, Sanzi. I'm ah. just asking. Well, when you, you, when you compare it to the Niger. rural areas where the food is coming from, they will pack all of them to Lagos, and then who is in Katsina? Who is right. in the village in totally Zamfara right. and all I that? Agree you know? with you. So I think we need more um, um, security personnel or patro patrol teams in this yeah. in this area. I will also bandits tell. I, I'll just advise um, farmers if you're listening. I mean, community impact goes a long way. Um, I know it's a lot. It will take a lot from your 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 capital to be able to your working capital and all of that. But I know that we've never really thank God. God's grace has been with us. We've never really had any challenge. Because also when we came in, we also took care of our community. So for every farmer out there, it's important that you impact your community in the little way that you can. You know, like we were able to sink boreholes, you know, to provide them with good water. Then, you know, as soon as we moved into our farmland, a lot of people came. You employed you know, people. Yeah, so, and also more people started expanding. So, I mean, it's a I far think that cry. was a question I missed to ask in Kiri was how this plays on employment. Because yes. that sector yeah. also employs. It employs. In Kiri, I'm sure she has a lot of employees under her, right. yeah. under her belt. So let us, let us also um, find a way as farmers, while we're waiting for the government to do the right thing, let us impact our community. That way, the community can help protect protect your farmlands from this um that's true it's yeah. kind of like what happened at uh, chevron during the protests mm. when the hoodlums were burning up everywhere yeah. and chevron environment wasn't wasn't affected yeah. so you take care of the community the community you shelters take care of you. Hopefully the right. community that knows the value absolutely <laughs> <laughs> that's all right so let me take one last comment before we run off um how can you explain a constitution that gave me the right to elect the president and give him immunity and do the same for governors senators and house rep um, house reps, even up to local government chairman and every public office holder. And meanwhile, who is giving out this beautiful immunity and incentives? Can't even keep one for your, myself. Get the constitution right before anything can work, including agriculture. Okay, well, I don't know your name, all, but all thank you for your comments. They are yeah. all inter it's actually interlaced. intertwined. I hope you vote. Yeah, 20, yeah. It's 23. about voting. So the voting process, we've learned that you also have to be involved in choosing who to vote for. Right. You can't exactly. just give, you can't vote for the options that they throw that at you. That they throw at you. I was, going, deep and, I was going to you know, say research yeah. on that. I think we've, we've, we've had a good show. I think I'm a bit relieved now. I'm not so depressed. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode at 3 p.m. tomorrow. It's been a very insightful conversation very very oh, that kind of conversation <laughs> but keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at way show africa one or at plus tv africa as we continue to hear what you're saying now in case you missed today's quote here it is again food security means all people have access to culturally appropriate nutritious food at all times without relying on emergency supplies that is it so we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation. Thank you so much, Inkiru. I think she's still there as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. All right, Thank bye. You. bye. <laughs>